Hey everybody, uh, this is going to be my run through of <clears throat> what we ended up with uh, in the materialize all the things thread. Uh, so probably see, I hope you can't really recognize elms from uh, especially a year ago, but um, even just a few weeks ago. So I'm going to run through what some of the some of the things that have happened with uh, materializing all the things here. Let's uh, close all that down. So. See, we've got uh, simple things like scroll fire. We've also got a left to right um, as you drill down, right? So top to left to right. So I've got kind of the outline where I am in the context of this outline, right? I'm in lesson one, I'm on the summary page. So it's your breadcrumb trail that's also selectable, um, highlighting where I am within each of these menus in then at the highest context. But then I've also got within the current local context of lesson one, can see that I'm in the summary page then we're drilling down into the material itself right and so then we've got hey this is about one minute of reading it has six images on it so um, these values are auto generated this is you know kind of uh, the page is self-aware if you will um, so scroll down and you can see that now we've got this progression right so this my context floats with me um, I can also quickly jump back to these links if I need to. You can see the progression bar at the top is picking up this same color, uh, color and accent color um, that we've now been able to apply through everything. So every application in Elms Learning Network has its own color um, and accent. Let's just scroll down. We've got sticky footer. That's something from Materialize. And we've got our next and previous navigation buttons um, with slight shadows in the orientation that they're going to take you. Um, I've also switched almost everything over to the materialized CSS um, icon set. Um, you can see we're applying waves that are the accent color. Um, it's hard to tell with our back button. I might change the back, the back to top button, but back to top button is also applying some of those stylings. Um, and then again, going from left to right down in detail, you've got this in-page navigation provided by uh, uh, scroll fire or scroll spy rather which is noticing where you are based on heading order. You should see the tick mark changes. Probably should change that to the accent color too. <laughs> but if I click it, you see it quickly indicates what I'm on, again, using the accent color. Um, so we'm gonna go back up to the top here, look at some of the other aspects of, of what's been added in. Um, there used to be uh, something indicating what system you're on over here. There's actually kind of some remnants of that around the UI still to clean up. But so if, uh, currently I'm working with this notion of replacing it with um, this CSS hexagon, which is fitting with our you know network-based approach to education. So we've got our hexagon, hexagon here with the label of where you are, what you're working on. So this is the content outline um, from a design, you know, usability perspective. I can click that anywhere on here and it'll take me back to the front page of that application, you know, if people have a connotation of front page. See, so we've got a drop shadow, raising it off the interface a little bit, um, but we've also got a consistency of this line, the border of the line, the border of our hexagon diamond label, right? Um, you can see, you know, some of the materialized consistency again. They're really working towards consistency um, and using the same design standard. Um, uh, go into the uh, some of the accessibility enhancements brought about through this I hit tab you'll see we can now see everywhere that we are in the correct tab order um, we don't get lost in our context um, and step into that video we go down to previous next um, everything's picking up this hue again of this you know with the styling consistency um, we're picking up the outlining based on what this system indicates its outlining should be. Uh, if I open up one of these flyouts, you see our side nav cards have a, almost this monopoly card type of a heading to them um, that's indicating uh, some level of context with the network. Um, and then I can step down through these. If I hit escape, I can bounce back out of that and it maintains context correctly uh, that I was a network. So then the next thing is my profile. I can drill into my profile. Uh, you see we're using the iconography of Materialize, um, but also uh, we've improved the, you know, we've built on top of the uh, accessibility of Materialize CSS. So 
uh, you might see the outlining right on here so that the browser's focus has shifted to the uh, window open from the button I clicked, which I can then tab into. I can emulate this account or I can escape. And then I correctly have focus set back on the higher level item. Right, so I can interface with forms, go into privacy settings, maybe I want to enable FERPA protection, it's a space bar, see we've got form consistency, tab back out of that, or sorry, escape out of those things, and I'm back at my profile being the thing that's highlighted. Um, we can do the same with these menus, drilling down into them, um, same with these menus. So I've really gone the extra mile to get this to be very accessible out, um, the, the WCAG. Uh, we're shooting for WCAG, uh, I believe, AAA, even though we uh, legally have to meet AA. Um, it's because I said, why not? Um, so you can see, um, again, consistency, design. These items are to the right, so they fly out from the right. We get focus on them. Uh, they have the same type of Monopoly card heading to them. Uh, I can then start tweaking the interface if I want using some of our accessibility settings. Um, contrast is correctly applied to do a higher contrast mode that was wrong <laughs> previously. Um, we can invert colors, disable some animations, which I still need to work on a little bit. We can inject the dys uh, open dyslexic font if we want, and it still applies to everything. This is an accordion um, in a side nav, so we're you know mixing two of these items together from materialized CSS. See, I can turn on our dyslexia simulator, step down into our tools, speed reader. And again, we're, we're maintaining correct focus. Um, I need to do some style cleanup on speed reader in, in general, but tab back out of that. See the keyboard keys we can use. If I double tap down, it'll bounce around. If I double tap next page, it'll go there. Double tap back, it'll go there because um, the keyboard keys indicated that. Uh, we can also just see that this menu also matches that styling. Now, um, get to edit. Still some, some cleanup work to do here. Uh, you can see we've changed the, uh, this changes to the save icon, you know, because no one uh, under, under probably 24 knows what that is. But <laughs> um, if I scale out the interface a little bit, you see we still have some components left to style, but uh, we support on larger monitors taking these tabs that are down at the bottom here and moving them up here so you kind of can change everything in one place. Um, but you can see that we're using the different components of Materialize, styling the form buttons, again, maintaining accessibility as to what it is I'm working with, navigation, you know, select lists. Um, so there's still some work to do here for sure. There's always work to do. <laughs> but um, this, is real. this has been merged into 05X. Uh, it's really getting us a lot closer to um, something I'm proud of as far as design and, and visually, um, which, you know, now that I'm into nine years working towards this dream, um, it's pretty cool. Um, so let's let's hop over to something else, right? So mentioned that our, our system isn't blue. <laughs> our system is, uh, you know, a, a robust series of, of colors. And so because we're going towards this, you know, this Google, Googleification, if you will, um, let me make sure clear caches here, um, Googleifying everything. Um, you see, we've got our our consistent branding, right? You know, I know where I am contextually right now, um, based on three factors. One is name, and so if we're going from the accessibility perspective of name, the first thing is other than skip to then skip to main skip to main content to main content. This is what I'm in inter inter interfacing with currently studio cool all right and then i could skip to content right and this is i'm in the context of the open studio but uh if i can see i've also got the visual of the color differential so i could start to learn hey when i'm on something that's uh, amber i believe is what this color is called uh, that means I'm working with the studio. If you're administering the system, there's a lot of different facets to what you're working with. Uh, so it's important to know what, you know, what am I looking at right now? Because uh, you're administering, you know, ton, dozens and dozens of courses potentially, uh, not to mention enrollment in them. So again, you can see the consistency applied. I click and there's the CSS waves from material, but it's waves that are applied 
consistent with the color and the highlighting of this. As I tab through things, you'll see it animates to the color of this system. And you see the button, the icons pick that up as well. Um, down to the footer. Uh, so we got the logo knowing where I am uh, to see what this looks like across some of the other systems and palettes, right? So we've got discussion boards here. Skip over to inbox. See, we've also opted for, um, I need a better image, but opted for a banner that's uh, slimmer, but um, on by default. And so right now I've just uh, modified that in the courses system here with the content where people would spend most of their time anyway. Um, but close that folder out so it's not distracting. If we drag this over, right, you can see it animate into positions that are still correct. Still need to uh, do something with uh, with regard to you know scroll fire. So uh, scroll fire might have glitched a little bit there uh, based on the browser browser resize. So there are still certainly some things to do, but then it jumps back into place. Um, going to some other aspects, um, inbox, so jump over to inbox. Um, I'm maintaining course, course scope. Um, and so we need to get some consistency with the naming here, right? So I'm currently in this course called SIG 100. I need it to be a little more noticeable that I'm in SIG 100, even though architecturally I'm in an authority system. Um, but you see we've got the, uh, the uh, fixed action button, as it's called, in uh, material. So I could you know, tap my thumb there, I can add a calendar event, and we haven't flushed out the calendar event thing or style the forms, you know, but again, they're starting to pick up the defaults styling because we're doing them <laughs> with, with intentionality. Um, jumping over to something that is much more styled, um, go to media, right, so logo, again, I already know how to use this. Uh, let's scale the interface back, hide that, uh, visual listing, All right? So using the material stylings, the material cards, right? So you can see that this is an image um, and then mixing that in with views, right? So, hey, there's a video from an external provider. Uh, it's not using any courses. It was last updated this time and I haven't tagged it with anything. Um, but then I can jump to that and we're taken to all the possible ways I can present this um, in a course. Now, um, there are other modes, right? These are the, the nice, happy in-network ones. We could always hit the share menu at any point anywhere and hit common and then go, oh, well, here's a direct iframe to this. Uh, now, you know, this has to be public available, right? That's more of a fallback mechanism. Um, but uh, I could scroll through them and see, well, there's Able Player at play here. So we've got Able Player framing in a YouTube video. Uh, there's Media Video Thumbnail, which you can click and expand the video to play, and then you can send it away. Um, and there's to the right, right? So I pick the one that I want, and then um, there's this nice hover icon, which actually copies the token to utilize this. So um, then I can go back to Adventure Media, so Courses, C100. These are the steps we're trying to eliminate, quite frankly. <laughs> All these things I'm clicking right now. Uh, because we want to have just a widget that you drop in and you know, upload your media into a just draggable area, basically. Um, we've already got uh, Pluplode built in. Uh, we're just not utilizing it fully yet. Uh, but you see, right, there's my treatment based on the way that that token was told to render, and then it presents itself consistently. The other I won't even show this. The other thing it's doing is that's actually going to be emitting X API statements, uh, so we can track what's going on there. Um, you also see it drilled down in the video and said, "Hey, there's one video on this page that takes up 35 seconds of time." Uh, if I go back up to lesson one, you'll see that now lesson one is aware that it has 19 images, one multimedia element, approximately four minutes of reading, and one video for 35 seconds of watching. So. These things are propagating back up. Uh, as I mentioned, the content is kind of self-aware at some level. Um, go back to media assets. You see the uh, chips taking on the color, the table with the background taking on some of the color. 
Um, and then also the fixed action button, we've got support for you know, iconography in there. So uh, these are all types that I know that they're coming. I know they have a nice icon for them. And so instead of the default, which is just to use the, pick up the system color, uh, we can make it pop a little more. So, you know, I could go in and add an image or figure label or anything I wanted uh, through here and, uh, and know based on the color, oh yeah, purple, right? So now I'm thinking, oh, purple, that's a video. I need to add another purple, right? <laughs> it's these little things. Um, can I add this to scene 100, a new video, right? And then we could go through uploading this, uh, you know, some spacing on like the tags input form here, right? Because it's using custom item. It's kind of, you see this merge between Drupal and, uh, and materialize where it sort of works. Um, you know, again, section forms, some of the stuff that's still yet to be styled for sure. Um, but it's, it's getting there. <laughs> Made a lot of uh, progress in, in getting there. So I've always said uh, styling and design are the easy part. Um, so they're the part that comes last, but they're, they're the hardest and most impactful at the same time. Um, so no one's going to care that this is the most flexible architecture ever created and that you can build basically anything with it, and we intend to, um, and, uh, until it looks good. And uh, I think it's really starting to finally shine the way I've always wanted it to. So thanks for watching.